All right, so we can cool here with Vali from Bulletproof Messenger. How you doing, man? Doing well. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Hey, congratulations on that new track to divide. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, it's been almost ten years. So, well, it's been more than ten years since we put out our last song. So, um, it's a good year, Mark. <laughs> so, what was going on here in the last decade, man? Why weren't you guys making music? Well, what wasn't going on? Um, we're all uh, we all have different. We live in different areas of New York or around New York. Um, our basis lives up in Albany. I was up in Albany for a little while too. I'm from Long Island originally, but uh, the main thing was um, I'm in the military, so I've had two deployments in that time. So between our our last album, which was 2009, and and now um, I had a deployment in 2008. It was really kind of an interesting story how that album came together. But uh, we uh, <clears throat> 2008 deployed that album was done right before I left and then uh, came back and then deployed again in 2013 and um, after that came back built this studio in my house just tore everything down to the bare bones and then uh, started getting back into writing and everything but everybody kind of at that last deployment everybody kind of spread three sheets of the wind I mean we got two guys living in New York City we got one guy in Brooklyn one guy upstate and then uh, we haven't really really had a, a, a solid drummer for a long time so um, we're, we're currently drummerless but um, luckily uh, I started taking lessons with Chad Zaliga from Breaking Benjamin back in the day and became good friends with him and uh, he's been helping us out with with these songs and um, it's kind of open-ended who knows he might might end up joining the band eventually but um, right now we're just happy to have him working with us and uh awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's a sick drummer, great guy. So, well, um, are you guys in the service or just you? No, it's just me. Um, the rest of the guys all do different jobs. One, one of my other guitarists is a full-time musician in Brooklyn. Um, our DJ guy is a uh, yeah, we have a DJ. Uh, he's he's like a um, financial advisor in the city. We got uh, my singer works. Uh, he does freelances. His own um, like kind of an entrepreneur doing his own like uh, internet marketing business. And then uh, our bassist lives up in uh, near Albany, New York, and he does uh, he has his own landscaping business. So we're all pretty, pretty busy outside of the music. So uh, what made you guys decide to come back together during the pandemic? Well, we've been like uh, we've been trying to write for a long time. And um, I kind of I, I I've been trying to start it up. I've been I usually create a lot of the instrumentals and just push them to the singer and see what he's interested in. Uh, Marcus is, is our singer and uh, he gets he'll uh yeah he'll usually reply like oh dude this is awesome and start like writing ideas to it and then like after a while like 2016 2017 he just kind of stopped responding and i haven't really seen him like we didn't really hung out a lot because we're all so far apart but uh the uh so like i, I just kind of figured he lost interest or you know like the, it, we just kind of like ran out of steam a little bit and i think we did but um i was doing something with chad and his band out in uh Pennsylvania and uh I'm helping them record an album and um ended up coming back to the city and dropping his guitarist off in the city and we all hung out and had dinner because uh the two guys live in the city and uh linked up and I we found out some freak accident I guess our phones weren't communicating like he wasn't getting any of my text messages so um so we fixed it right there at the table and then I actually happened to have like 20 to 30 instrumentals written that he'd never heard before. So he just started listening. He's like, dude, this is sick. This is sick. This is sick. And uh, like a week later, this is like March last year. So like right, right before the pandemic hit, like a week later, he's out of my house and we're just writing. Like he spent a week here and we, we wrote basically 10 songs in, in like that shot, like, cause the instrumentals were pretty much close to done. Um, so we just wrote all the songs together and, and it, uh, I mean, you know, I guess the creative juices were built up and it just kind of worked, you know? That's awesome, man. I mean, you know, coming together after that long of a space must have been a pretty good feeling, especially that, you know, this dude's fucking me over, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what to think, you know? Um, and he was probably thinking the same thing. I, you know, I wish he was on this conversation right now, but he's, you know, he's like, yeah, I mean, you don't ever, ever respond to my cold calls, blah, 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 you know? And it's just a stupid technology thing. It's like the Key and Peel skit where, like, you know, the text message, like, ends up always sounding angry, you know? <laughs> so, uh, uh, but it, it ended up working out because, um, I mean, I think we matured a lot in the time off too. So like it, uh, the writing was never that easy, you know, like we, we didn't have any arguments. It was always like, it just came together and we, uh, you know, we enjoyed the process. We got along real well and it just kind of came out easily, you know? Well, now, uh, you got this track out. Is there going to be more singles or is there a full album coming? What are you guys planning on doing? Yeah, we're, um, we want to build up to a full album, but like we said, you know, like we, it's been so long, like we just need to get the ball rolling. And um, <clears throat> I mean, we actually had this this 
track done last year and it was it just took this long to get out because i had to get my bassist involved and he's got his full-time business and um, it kind of like winds down during the winter so he's got a lot of time during the winter so i got to kind of cycle it so that um we can get the songs done and then in the winter i could take the songs up to him or he can come down to me and we can work the bass parts out and track the bass and, and basically like put all his parts in and then finish the song so um we uh we're working on we got three singles right now we're going to release um kind of slow uh we wanted like the optimally i think like if we're doing the single mentality it'd be like six to eight weeks is like the optimal time we're going to go 12 weeks between every song just because we need the time to get the our shit together for the next group of singles so our next thing will be released um what did i say april may june july 15th and then the one after that will be uh october 15th and then hopefully we'll have the, the next batch of three done in time for um in time for the release in january so it's kind of a long release window but there's a lot of stuff what we're trying to do within the release window too we want to just keep releasing content keep in touch with our fans because we've been horrible with that in the past 10 years so we're just like slowly and the whole landscape has changed with social media and music and promotion i mean like our last album sold a lot on itunes did that tell you something it's like nothing nothing like that now it's all spotify and uh youtube based so well, it's got to be different. I mean, you know, at least you're coming into a time in the industry where everyone's almost on the same playing field. You know what I mean? I mean, no one's able to tour, no one's able to do anything. So, it's all yeah, that's a good point. Because so, to that respect, it's it's made it a lot easier for us because we it just plays to our advantages. Because we don't really, you know, like I said, we don't have a full time drummer. Um, you know, uh, in the past we'd play shows. Um, I think our last show was 2012. We played a grammar scene in, in New York City at like a Gotham Rocks thing, and that's no longer uh, happening. And we only played like, you know, we played opening gigs for, for bigger bands because we had it in at this uh, upstate concert hall in upstate New York. And uh, so we opened for a ton of different big bands. And that, that was great for us because, I mean, who nobody enjoys playing shows for five people. And, you know, if, if you're young and 18, whatever, you know, like it's your first first band and you go around touring and that's that's fun. And, you know, like we're kind of past that point in our lives that we can actually pick up and do that like i'm about to have a kid soon so um you know i'm married a couple of other guys are like going that direction too so like you know it, it's it's not like there's a part-time thing for us we, we take it seriously but it's like it's just a lot a lot more challenges and i'm sure it's a challenge for everybody right but um our strengths are doing the stuff in the studio and doing the production um you know working together remotely and uh you know so in that respect covid's been a asset for us more than a detriment because we've been able to just take more time to do it and, and write songs and put stuff together and, and work on our our marketing and promotion and, and everything so i think you're right there <clears throat> one of the hardest aspects has got to be being in new york during this time i mean there's so many different restrictions and things that are going on i mean i'm in buffalo so i know it's right much. it's uh, New York City is different than the rest of the state too, though. I mean, so like, uh, I'm I'm out on Long Island. Hey, Marcus is coming in. Marcus is in the city. You could probably speak more to that. <clears throat> but um, being out on Long Island, it's a little, it's a lot different than the city. I mean, it's a lot more like upstate. And I uh, actually drill out of Rochester, so I'm up your way at least once a month. And um, so it's it, Long Island is kind of similar to that, I guess, upstate. If if Buffalo is any closer to Rochester, what's up, Marcus? Yo, yo. Yo. What was your name again? I'm sorry, man. It's Ramsey. Randy? Ramsey. Ramsey. Oh, cool. Awesome. Ramsey, so so fucking cool. This is uh, Marcus, my singer. Uh, we were just talking about how COVID's impacted um, the writing and whatnot, and uh, basically like living in, in New York. And I, I was telling him how like New York City is a lot different than Long Island and a lot different than the rest of the state. So like, New York itself has got a weird dichotomy. Maybe you can talk to the, the New York City portion of that. Yeah. I mean, in general, it was just like a Mad Max movie. And it still kind of is because I, I live right on Broadway and like 50th. And there's just like roving gangs of motorcycles coming out of my balcony every day, still, even to this day, which is insane. Um, but like writing wise, I spent a lot of time just locked at home, honestly. And it was very conducive to writing especially when work was, you know, iffy um, and being able to leave and go to balls in Long Island was really my only escape. So it was kind of forced. But I remember the first time I was down there it was right when they were shutting down. Uh, they hadn't quite shut down yet. And I got the email when I was at Bali's place pointing his basement that you don't have to come back to work again. Like we're all working from home. And from that point on, it was sort of just go time, like four days, five days straight. 
And we've never really had those elongated writing sessions because we've always kind of lived close right. or we're in rehearsal studios and to be able to sit in an actual recording studio for four or five days, um, sipping tequila basically the entire time <laughs> was kind of awesome. It was really great, honestly. And it's, it sucks to say that, but there has been a lot of positives through COVID. Now, earlier, uh, Volley was telling me a story about uh, the reason behind the gap between everything. And then he was saying, he actually got tired of you for a little while. And he blocked <laughs> That's not what I said. He's twisting my words. <laughs> <laughs> he blocked you on the phone. And then he, right before, uh, he couldn't get your messages. Right before COVID, we actually we hadn't seen each other in I don't, I don't know, a year or maybe two. And we just met up for a drink and food. And it was random. Like, Volley just texted me. He's like, hey, we're meeting up up the block from you. Just come. And we sat there and drank and you know did what we do. And Volley pulled out these songs on his cell phone. And that started this whole thing. Three months later, COVID hit. A month later, we were in the studio. So it's odd how this like, confluence of events just sort of happened serendipitously. But I think before that, we just we weren't really much in touch, to be honest, at all. Well, I was joking around with him earlier. I said, man, it must have been like, why isn't this asshole returning my text? And, well, That's exactly what he said. I have video of him saying, hey, I fucking texted you. I'm like, bro, look at my phone. There's no text from you <laughs> at all. He's like, shit, I thought you were ignoring me. This is like, like we're adult 30s men, 40s almost now. <laughs> and we still act like fucking teenagers. Well, you got to be sometimes, then, you know? Yeah, you don't return my phone call. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> I was fucking married. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. You were doing that. It wasn't me. He's doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys didn't have like Facebook or anything? They'll, you know, keep track on each other. Say, you know, what's this fucking asshole up to? Not really. Like, we have that guy. We we got a couple fucking assholes upstate. I think <laughs> <There's> one. <laughs> I was That's the it. other fucking asshole upstate. Now I'm down here. <laughs> That's not you. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, you know, barely even have group texts. It's weird when we're like we spent so many years living together literally and seeing each other every day a decade and then touring together and i think like maybe we all just needed a break from each other for 10 years <laughs> maybe i hate to say it that way but well, you know huh? those group texts and group emails never really ended well because they always divulged into or, you know like just slowly fucking turned into a massive jokes and memes and bullshit so like yeah. I'm hesitant to even start a group text or chat or anything right now because it, it it just like the only way to do business is to call somebody direct and, and really like discuss things or have like a meeting on the phone. Kind of like what you were saying before is, um, you know, like even on the phone, it's like, you know, there's a priority of, of uh, ways to do business and the, prior, the number one way is in face to face. When you can't do that, you got to do some kind of video chat or, or Zoom. And then um, right below that is is like texting, which still sucks. And then like, I guess at the bottom is Twitter, right? Because you can only do like 220 characters or something like that but um and as you get closer and closer to the bottom like things just delve into nonsense and stupidity so yeah plus we're musicians like it's kind of inherent that you just always are children you know you yeah. i don't know what it is about the being a creative person but you know you're overly emotional always you you know these are your family members so you've always got you know the need to bust their balls and some of us take it not as well as others <laughs> to be honest and that kind of makes it funny to do it more we used to literally and this is like going out on stage like ball tap each other and it's the worst time you can do anything is when you're walking out on stage in front of like a thousand or a few thousand people or even a couple dozen people and That's you just have the points <laughs> and you yeah yeah the harder it is the better you know you the more points you get and there's been a couple big shows where i've got tapped like middle finger flick in the nuts and you're stumbling on stage <laughs> Just never stop being children. It's true. Now, when you guys finally got back together, I mean, was it kind of like riding a bike, or did you guys all progress musically where it was, you know, the same guys but different styling? I mean, in terms of personal relationship, bikes, like we're best friends. I grew up with these people, you know. In terms of musically, it's gotten so much better. Like sitting down with Vol, even. We used to bicker much more, or we had other chefs in the kitchen. It just didn't work. When we worked for those five days straight, it was just seamless. Like we're just bouncing ideas and going, writing lyrics, coming back, literally recording on the fly as we were writing, and it just worked. It would not have done that way when, when we were in our twenties, for sure. 
No, I was actually expecting to have to go back and like redo vocals because like just call these scratch tracks because like whatever the lyrics aren't set or whatever. But like for whatever reason, like it was just it worked real well and uh we we came up with good stuff on the spot and i don't know if we could do it again honestly but um we, we're gonna try you know we're gonna keep going with this this is it, it was you know the dynamic between me and marcus has changed a lot over the years and and uh i think like like i said before i think we just matured a little bit in in both the musical aspects and the interpersonal aspects and we just uh you know like face to face like we can we can joke around and we could bust each other's balls a bit but we also like you know just, just get down to business and take it seriously so it's it's you know it just works right now so we're gonna go with that and keep that going and the problem with that though is there's still you know history right so we have still members in the band that you know didn't like necessarily the way things rolled out in the last album for example or the way it was mixed or mastered the writing process for that matter and you know small things even in our 30s <laughs> still kind of trigger you know of that process that they didn't enjoy and you know it's not always pushing up fucking happy times like we've had to have some a lot actually of heart to hearts during 2020 between most of the members of man outside of being involved to be honest Paul and I um to try to level set and say this is not the way things are going to go they're not going to happen like they did last time we're all adults now we're doing things differently and for the most part I think we've lived up to that to be honest yeah, that's a, you know, delve into that a little bit. I mean, like when we wrote our first album, it was like a totally different world. I mean, we were, we were all like working restaurant jobs and part-time bullshit, you know? So like we, then we all lived like at least the three of us, me, him and our DJ, we lived like around the block from each other. So we would, we would just sit in the, in the same room for like hours on end and just write, you know, um, other members that are no longer even in the band, like wouldn't even come because they, you, they weren't playing their instruments. It was like, yeah, it's just like doing work, you know? And um, we realized early on that to play shows and write an album at the same time, like it, it takes too much. That's why like professional bands, like they'll, they'll take a year and write an album. They'll take a year and go tour. It was like, why don't, why aren't we doing things that way? Cause like we'd have a show every weekend and then like, that's when we have time off to write. So you can't, it's hard to do both at the same time. Um, so now everybody's got even harder jobs. So, uh, you know, just getting the two of us together is hard. And then, like I was explaining before, everybody lives in different areas of the, the state or, you know, even country at times. It's it's impossible to get everybody together. And then the ones that show up are the ones that like get to get to make input. So it's kind of the way it's been rolling right now. And um, yeah, it, it step on people's feet. But in an optimal world, I'd like to have everybody involved and everybody into it. But it, it's it's difficult. So like Marcus and I have been kind of just taking the lead lately and, and um, you know, doing the best we can to involve everybody. But it's it's a challenge. Now, one thing I appreciate about the new standard of putting out singles instead of full albums is that you got to put out your best work when you put out a single. I mean, there's nothing else to fall back on. You know, it's that song is all you have. Unlike when you put out an album, you can go ahead and put on a couple pieces of the shit just to fill it out. <laughs> yeah, just fill it. Yeah, you know, just to yeah. stuff stuff the album out. Yep. Yeah, I, I that's that's a good way of putting it. I think definitely. So, um, and every song we've been, we've been writing is taking a lot of attention. So it's, um, and, and you don't really have, there is still a rush, but like the album, it's like the albums do this date, you try to set a deadline and then like, you know, you get the good songs done. And then, like you said, the, the, the fillers just kind of like sometimes end up squeaking in at the last minute and it, it's, it's tough. There's just no reason for it. And we've had like quarrels with fillers or things that, you know, the verses weren't as strong as the chorus. And it's just really a good song. And that stifles the whole writing process. So right now, being able to just go for the singles, essentially, is much easier. As well as to promote them, we're finding with this latest single, you focus your time on it. You know, we kind of can operate like a label. We have the money to invest in our own marketing and the marketing channels that are available through Spotify, Facebook, and all that shit. It completely makes them irrelevant. Like we could tap into literally thousands, tens of thousands of people in a second with a new song and have it go out to tens of thousands of their friends. And we just saw it happen in the last three weeks since the last release. It goes all over the world real quick. And I feel like if it was an entire album we were pushing, it wouldn't have gone that way. Because there's gonna be some songs people don't like or they gotta find the ones that are popular. Right now, Spotify decided it's popular. It's like, well, this is now your most popular song. Well, that's the other thing too, though. I mean, part of it's strategy and, um, 
you know, I, I've been doing a lot of research into like strategy and Spotify and, and YouTube are, are both like the number one ways people discover new music. Spotify encompasses all the other streaming services combined. So like, you know, you just spend most of your time on Spotify, you'll be doing all right. And then YouTube it encompasses all the other streaming services and Spotify combined. So like if you get big on YouTube, which I think is the hardest thing, because we don't have like a full music video yet. We're working on getting there, but um, you, you create content for YouTube consistently and create content for social media consistently around every single release i think after a year or two of doing that consistently i think if you were to do an album and let's just call it 10 songs or whatever and like our strategy is 12 weeks which we, we we've already talked about is a little bit long but i mean right now that's that's the best we can do with with all the challenges we we face um after a year of doing that and having 10 songs like i think you'd you promote an album of 10 songs over the course of a year or two, like by releasing a single at a time and then roll it up with an album with like maybe one or two extra songs or some like, you know, uh, you know, some, some kind of extra content to make it. So it's not just like, all right, you're just re-releasing every song you just released as an album. I think you're going to have a lot more of a, um, a following and a lot more response to that rather than just releasing one album one day one and then then being you know having nothing for the course of the, the year or two so it, it just keeps you in front of people's faces the algorithms of social media and, and spotify lets you submit to curators for their playlists every month so um you know i think the sweet spot in there's six the eight to eight to twelve weeks or i mean eight to what did i say six to eight weeks uh so if we can get our release scheduled down to that like it, it'd be even more effective but i we, we're already seeing i mean our our first single that we hadn't released, we hadn't done anything in the past 10 years, really. So um, our first single is almost 20,000 plays right now, which is kind of crazy. And it's only been two weeks. So um, <clears throat> to see how that goes with the, the next and the next releases, and they're just going to build on each other. I think it's, it's so much potential. So I'm really excited for it. How do you guys feel the need to do a, uh, a live stream or anything like that? We already did one already. We're working on that game right now. I mean, um, we did a live Q&A, like with the release of the song uh we're trying to refine that a little bit i've been doing a little bit of twitch stuff with um uh there's a dude shaman Moore. he's a singer for the sick puppies or a former singer for the sick puppies he's got his own twitch channel where he writes stuff live and uh i've been helping him out with a lot of that he's actually taken a lot of my instrumentals and, and written vocals over it and um so i started mixing his stuff live and he sent me a lot of people and uh so i became affiliate on twitch and now i'm trying to do the same thing with the Banya account and work both those at the same time it's hard to do two at once but we're, we're kind of working on the um you know how to how to take advantage of the the live stuff as much as possible since we're not all in the same room it's hard to do anything like recording wise live because the, the latency between studio and you know everybody else's internet connections but um Maybe we'll get there eventually. So we're, we're just trying to figure that out and, and, and just get in front of people and, you know, say, hey, we're back or we're around because I can guarantee half our fans from 10 years ago still don't even know that we probably have a single release right now. Now, for those that are watching, they want to follow up. They want to know to where to get the music, what's next with you guys, where to go, what do they do? You could just, I mean, it's simple as just Googling bulletproof messenger on the internet but right now we're, we're concentrating on spotify youtube um our website's uh bulletproofmessenger.net um we scooped up a couple different domains but that one's our oldest one and it, it goes to our official bpm website which we're still working on but it's it's pretty much up and running um you know and, and we're on facebook twitter and uh and instagram as well so we're, we're constantly just gonna be pushing stuff out on those we started a playlist on on spotify for uh for bands that like are kind of similar to us and um, you know, not not necessarily big label bands or, or big following bands, but bands that we think are awesome that we're trying to push as like, um, you know, become friends with, create a community around. I, I think that's the key in these times is to create a community around around your music because the songs are like great, but they're just like almost like the soundtrack to like the life of the band or like, you know, the life of uh, the community. So um, I, I think the key is to create more around the song than just a song. And uh, that's what we're trying to do right now. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. It was great talking to you guys. I love the uh, the new track, and I can't wait to hear what's next from you guys. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Ramsey. Appreciate your time, too, man. All right, guys. Take care. All right. Take, take it easy, bro.